Hello viewers, welcome back to the Nova Bus Fan. Hope you all have been doing well. Today, fittingly, you join me starting here at probably the coolest metro access in the city, the Paris metro style uh, entrance at Square Victoria OACI uh, here in downtown Montreal. Uh, and I say fittingly because it's time to get to the Q&A, the first ever Q&A here on the Nova Bus Fan. Uh, I put out a call to questions and you guys came and responded, gave me 10 questions that I could use. So, fittingly, as I asked you for your favorite Montreal metro stations, along with your questions, Let's do 10 questions, 10 stations. So we begin our exodus of the metro here uh, for your questions at Jolicoeur Metro Station uh, on the western end of the Green Line. Right now, quite covered up by blue tarp and fence because they are currently building elevators for this station, so you can't see the entire station. But what's very cool about this station, at least from the inside, uh, is the openness of its ticket hall area and all the daylight that hits the platform below. It's a very nice place uh, to be, especially on a sunny day. You get uh, quite a lot well of natural light on the trains, which is always a nice, a nice sight for a system that is completely underground. So our first question comes from Technet9090, who asks, why the RTL, the Réseau de Transport de Longueuil, decided to opt for uh, electric minibuses made by the company BYD uh, instead of Nova Bus or New Flyer uh, full-size electric buses? And I think the answer is pretty simple. I think the RTL was aiming to first deploy electric transit on lower ridership routes. So I think that was their, their plan initially. Uh, so instead of going for something uh, much larger, to, at least to start, they wanted to test electric bus technology with something a bit smaller on a smaller scale, uh, unlike uh, maybe the, the STM who has more budget to, to spend on you know, new, uh, no, uh, new flyer electric buses, which are coming this year, uh, as well as the LFSE uh, electric buses on the 36 route. Um, but of course, the STM is a different animal when it comes to ridership. Every route, pretty much every route on the STM has a really high ridership. Uh, so a bigger bus uh, is always uh, definitely beneficial. So I think that was their, their, their mindset behind it. And we'll see what happens. Maybe eventually the RTL will opt for bigger buses, but I think that's just how they wanted to start things off uh, in terms of a turn towards electric transit. Welcome to Lyon Grou Station, normally one of the busier stations in the metro system, right now a little less so for obvious reasons. Um, but it is the favorite station of my good buddy, Reese Martin, also known as RM Transit. Hey Ben, I'm just curious, what are your long-term plans for the channel? Are there any kind of big projects you want to do? Long-term plans? I'm just curious. Yeah, that's a pretty good question, Reese. Um, I have a lot of goals for the future. I've always had uh, a lot of ambitions when it comes to my creative uh, interests and outlets. Uh, and now, I, more than ever, I'd say I have quite a few goals uh, when it comes to what I want to do for the channel. Uh, not just in content, not just in uh, engagement, like this q and I feel like was something I've always wanted to do. Uh, I just was lacking the engagement before, which, by the way, thank you guys a lot for engaging a lot for this video and all other comments that you've left lately it means a lot but also just generally just different types of growth opportunities you know collaborative uh, efforts um, whether it be in the form of being on other people's channel like yours like the video that we did together uh, uh, or having you or other people on the channel and collaborating uh, whether it be this video uh, other videos uh, in the future and and just finding different ways to bring uh, quant content and coverage about Montreal's transportation uh, development and transit systems as it is right now. Uh, I just I have so many ideas and I'm looking forward to exercising them uh, and, and doing that a lot. So here's an MR73 coming in, right on. Uh, and uh, yeah, so just a whole lot of stuff uh, to look forward to. Uh, and uh, yeah, just to, in summary, there's a lot to come. So our next question comes to us from Elias Chery. Sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. Um, we're here at your favorite metro station, Champ de Mars, here in the eastern part of downtown, basically the old port, uh, old Montreal. Uh, and it is one of the most beautiful stations on the network, as voted several times by a lot of different people. A lot of people would agree with that, uh, especially when it comes to the stained glass uh, fixtures around the ticket area. It's a very airy, open station, at least normally, because right now they're doing quite a bit of work 
uh, as you can see, uh, was to do uh, with the concrete of the station doing some refurbishment there, as well as the waterproof membrane that keeps water out of the uh, from il infiltrating into the station uh, from from the ground. So. Other, other than that, you could still get a good idea of it from the inside, so it's still a very beautiful place. So his question has to do with the most underrated transit system in Quebec and what I think it is. It's right across the river from, from Montreal, it's Laval, the STL. Uh, I think they have a really solid transit system. On, on the surface, it doesn't look like anything uh, particularly special. Uh, I think that's partially what makes it underrated because what they do, I find that they've always been uh, ahead of the curve in a lot of things. They've been the first to test a lot of different systems. Uh, notably, they were the first to try uh, or the first to have automated announcements in buses. They were the first to, to test an electric bus in Quebec. Just a bunch of things like that that I think makes them quite an interesting uh, system to talk about because they've done a lot of, they've had these, a lot of out of the box ideas, I'd say, uh, when it comes to their service offering and to things that they've tried and to, and to projects and experiments that they've done. They even have a, a BRT style bus lane similar to what we might end up seeing on the PNF BRT in a few years. Uh, near Montmorency Metro Station, which is pretty cool. It's not a very long lane. They, they've talked about extending it, though. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely a very interesting thing, and that's what, to me, makes them one of the more underrated systems. While there may be buses in my frame right now, you can still pot spot the Metro sign right there. We're at Charlevoix Metro Station here in the Point St. Charles area of Montreal. Uh, also, the deepest station in the network in terms of sea level. The Unarrible Grand platform actually goes below sea level. So our question from this station comes from Sky of the Universe here on YouTube. Uh, and his question is, what I think the, the STM is planning on doing with their preserved MR63 train. So for those who don't know, the STM actually kept three cars, one element of a functional train uh, for historical uses of some kind. Uh, they never specified exactly what they would do with them. Uh, so my theory, since it's a three-car train, I don't see them being able to use it for a service uh, of any kind, of any use of service, uh, passenger service again, uh, being that three cars doesn't really work on a system where the, the, the smallest trains are on the blue line and there are six cars and they're planning on expanding them to nine cars. So I don't know how they would use them. I, I don't know how they would use them for service. I don't think they would use them for service. I think they'd use them maybe for commemorative uses to bring them up out of the network and have them on display maybe uh, if not maybe for for movie shoots maybe for a prop for a movie where they would want something more uh, period accurate if they're doing something in the six taking place in the 60s 70s uh, maybe that would make sense but other than that I don't see um, a potential service use uh, for those trains again uh, other than the fact that they preserve them for historical posterity uh, maybe so that, that could be it uh, I don't I don't know but if ever I have a, an answer for that maybe I'll bring that up at another point uh, or maybe I'll share the details over on my social media if you guys are interested in seeing that links are below if you haven't followed there already but um, yeah so that's that's kind of my uh, my thoughts on that not very concrete nothing really uh, there isn't much concrete uh, information out there about it it's, all that we know is that they kept the train and uh, that's it and it's only a three-car train so Our next question brings us to one of the more colorful and certainly the most angular metro stations in the system, and that is La Salle. Uh, La Salle also on the Green Line. There's a lot of you who have picked Green Line stations, which I can't blame you. There's a lot of the nicest stations are on this line. Uh, and uh, this is no exception, that's for sure. I love the station for its lines, its angles, uh, its abstract design. It's just really cool. And so this question comes from Julien Marchand Deralo, and his question is, what is my favorite system other than Montreal? Which is an interesting question to ask me in one of the arguably most cool looking stations in Montreal. Uh, and I have a pretty easy answer for that, it's Paris. The Paris Metro, of course, is what inspired the Montreal Metro uh, from the original rolling stock, taking a lot of uh, uh, technical uh, specifications from the first generation rubber tire rolling stock in Paris. 
uh, as well as, of course, just the rubber tire technology in general came from Paris. It was the first system to develop it, and we were the first system to implement it in full, entirely. Uh, and, uh, well, the rest is history, as they say. Uh, I just love Paris also for the amount of connectivity it offers. It's a, such a huge system, 14, no, sorry, 16 metro lines, if you include the two biz lines, the, I think the three biz and the seven biz but yeah lots and lots of uh, metro lines there are so many stations so much different types of rolling stock a variety you have the rubber tire system uh, rubber tire lines and the uh, metal wheel lines and you have automated trains and uh, manual control trains it's it's just a really impressive system uh, in general and one of the absolute greatest rapid transit systems in the world uh, definitely a place that Montreal uh, is deserving to be inspired of uh, of course ever since the beginning fingers crossed I can go there one day I'm, I'd love to see it in person and just ex experience uh, the capital the French capitals uh, massive rapid transit network not, not just the metro the RER and other things as well but uh, Definitely very cool and my favorite metro system other than Montreal. As this Azure leaves, we find ourselves at Rosemont Station, another station on the original network of the Orange Line uh, here in the aptly named Rosemont Petit Patrie neighborhood of Montreal. Just a little bit of a splash of color with the orange pillars and uh, otherwise, it's very beige and, and dark colors, uh, a couple of black, uh, dark colors, at least the black here. A and the question for this station comes from Matthew James, who asks, if there's any prospective extension of the metro that I'd like to see happen, what would that be? Uh, and I'm guessing he meant extensions that were not necessarily planned, things that maybe I just pop out of my head, that, you know, what I think would be interesting as a, another train turns up, but we're going to keep going. Um, one for sure would definitely be the yellow line. I'm from the, I'm from the South Shore myself. So the yellow line has always made sense to me to extend further either east, west, or south, um, maybe further along uh, into Longueuil, uh, as has always been sort of the plan uh, with the yellow line to go further towards the uh, St. Hubert Airport. Um, if not, yes, a west or eastbound extension, maybe to, to replace the idea of the Leo tramway that I've talked about uh, before on, in, in these videos. Um, so there's definitely that. That's a, that's, a, that's a project that's been proposed for a long time. From my own imagination, I guess you could say, I don't know if it's ever been talked about. With an extension of the Green Line west, this train's going to make a lot of noise. Hold on a second. So an extension of the Green Line further west from Angrignon, uh, possibly going to, as far as La Chine or Dorval. Uh, I think that would be a really interesting idea, especially since they've been talking about rapid transit connections, you know, with the, the, the east-west uh, tramway proposal to Lachine. Uh, maybe something towards Dorval and then the, the REM could connect at Dorval and that would make it even more of a multimodal station than it already is. So that's another idea that comes to mind. I think that would be a really interesting one. Uh, again, it might have already been proposed. I might even be having an old idea that's been talked about before, but I, I can't be certain 100%. Uh, I hope you heard all of that because this guy's relatively loud. Anyway, those are my uh, thoughts on prospective extensions. Thank you for your question. Our next port of call is right here on the eastern end of the Green Line, the first station of the Olympic extension of the Metro from 1976, Préfontaine Station, one of the prime examples of brutalist architecture in a network uh, and also another very colorful and airy station when it comes to natural light uh, just one of the nicest stations especially on the green line uh, but definitely one of the best in the network uh, and the favorite of many including the asker of the next question none other than Paige Saunders one of uh, yet another YouTube creator to cameo in this video so without further ado Paige take it away with your question hey it's Paige here out here on the blue line doing a video about brutalism when I uh, came across your favorite station I was wondering if you had any thoughts on the new stations going in and whether the city should require that extensions to the Montreal Metro keep in that brutalism style that the Metro is famous around the world for. This must have been planned. Your question must have been really well planned with your favorite station. Brutalism at Préfontaine. What a surprise. Um, but yes, I think uh, for sure the Blue Line should definitely, or the Blue Line extension I should say, should definitely take inspiration for brutalism because especially with the Blue Line, a lot of those stations really have that, that architectural vibe. I think that was just something to do with the 80s, especially. Uh, of course, this is a very prevalent around the entire network, especially here uh, and further down the green line, of course, here on this end of, of the, the network. Uh, but I think for sure that the blue line would uh, benefit from retaining that vibe of, uh, and that style of architecture. Maybe with a, a slightly modern twist, of course, you do want to do show some 
um, imprint of the era, I should say, uh, that the stations were made in. And this, these are going to be way more modern than any of the other stations on the line. So I definitely think that, you know, a balance would be really cool. Uh, but yeah, definitely have some brutalis brutalism uh, included in the design of those stations, uh, in the architectural design. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they come up with. Uh, we're hopefully going to see those soon, considering the proposed uh, extension is supposed to start being constructed next year. So. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're, we're in to see some uh, design uh, aspects and some preliminary blueprints and whatnot very soon. So I'm looking forward to that and I will definitely cover that too. So Paige, thank you for your question. Definitely interesting uh, and definitely cool to speculate what those stations will look like. <laughs>
Uh, I don't have a ton of ideas off the top of my head, so I'm sorry about that, but I think this would be a really good idea for a video uh, on its own if the right research, if there's if enough research done. So I'm definitely going to look into that and add it to my, my list of ideas for videos. So thank you very much for that. Our final question brings us back here to Jody Caro to complete the circle. Uh, and that question is by Fletcher, who asks, what I think the future is for rapid transit in places like pointe aux trembles in specific, or, or generally in other parts of uh, Montreal, which are not quite well served by rapid transit right now. Most of this is actually can be attested to the east, so pointe aux trembles is a good reference point. Um, but I think the future is probably, it's uncertain. There's definitely some ideas and there's proposals uh, about rapid transit in that end of the city. Um, there has been talks about you know increasing service on the Mascouche line. Of course, the Mascouche line was a big deal when it came along for the first time. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of ridership, at least not as much as expected, um, but that's definitely a possibility. There's also been talks about electrifying it in its entirety, uh, or even converting it into a branch of the REM. Uh, that would probably be a pretty interesting uh, option. I don't think it would happen because it belongs to CN, that line. It is a freight route for CN, uh, the Saint Laurent subdivision, of, uh, to be specific. Um, maybe a secondary track that could be used for a REM uh, extension or a electrification project because I don't know if CN has ever been interested in electrifying that line. Um, so we would have to see. Uh, I think that's probably one of the more prevalent possibilities that have been talked about other than extending the blue line which is definitely concrete and is happening uh, as of next year. Uh, uh, shovels should be in the ground for that so that's definitely a big deal. It's not quite pointe aux trembles east uh, but Anjou is definitely a step in the right direction. Hopefully we'll see more of that uh, as the years progress and less stagnation when it comes to rapid transit development uh, in Montreal in general. That's what we're here to talk about so Fingers crossed, one day we'll see a lot more widespread transit like that, not just east, but all over Montreal. And well, that basically covers all of your questions, guys. I had a blast making this. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. As an MR73 rolls out of Jody Car, beautiful. So yeah, just again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys so much for submitting your questions. I had a ton of fun making this. Uh, I definitely want to continue making these kinds of videos in the future uh, and definitely taking from your feedback and making uh, more content based on your ideas as well. Uh, I definitely live off of your feedback and I love every comment I get. I respond to as many as I can. Uh, and uh, yeah, just it's just a whole lot of fun and uh, just a carrying on of, of my, my vision for the channel and, and being more engaged with you guys and just bringing you all sorts of cool stuff about transit in Montreal. Definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already. Uh, like, comment, all that stuff, especially the commenting, uh, and get notified if you haven't already to see all these videos as they come live. Oh yeah, don't forget, you can support me uh, on Coffee, coffee.com slash Fan linked below in the comments. Uh, and yeah, other than that, thanks a lot guys. See you guys later in the next video, hopefully somewhere down the line very soon, and uh, have a great day. Cheers.